just landed here in Odense in Denmark. Actually missed my stop on the train on the way here and got off like two stops later. So an hour later than anticipated. Um, it's kind of a bit wet at the moment. It was a bit warm actually in the morning uh, back in Hamburg. And up here it's actually kind of dreary and wet. So, you know, it is what it is. It still feels kind of not cold in a sense. So, you know, I've still got shorts and t-shirt on, but I'm still rocking it. Here is going back to the hotel or going to go check in at the hotel and then go enjoy the sights for a day. So yeah, only here for a short time, one night, one day, and then off to Copenhagen tomorrow. And so far, first impressions, this place looks fucking awesome. Very nice, a mix of architecture and uh, greenery. A nice park here on the left. What a vibe. Let's go find this hostel or actually hotel. It's an expensive stay tonight, I think like 120 bucks. <laughs> You know, so see how long we can survive in Scandinavia with minimal money. <laughs> We've got a swimming pool essentially right where the harbour is or whatever you want to call it the port the harbour on this side over here just between those two greeny yellowy buildings very interesting it's like why don't you just jump in the water <laughs> yeah and i've been seeing this chicago burger which is just up ahead at multiple places so that's been interesting too oh at aldi maybe i should go in there hmm. So this is the first day in Denmark officially. Um, arrived at Odense at about 4.30 p.m. And not gonna lie, I had to take like four different chain, uh, train swaps, uh, of which I missed one. So I arrived about an hour late. Unfortunately for me, that meant that a couple of the places I wanted to go were closed. Um, like the Funen village, which is like an old historical village. What else? Um, one of the museums, the, her, the house of uh, and, Anders Christensen, I think his name was, one of the, the famous figures of um, Scandinavian lore. But needless to say, this place is quite nice, so I'm enjoying it so far. Although, I will give you a quick few points. So, here in Denmark, so far, what I've noticed is, as you probably already know, everything is very expensive. Um, and like this is a simple rule that I just came up with now but to figure out what something costs in Denmark think about Australia right and then plus a couple of dollars on top so you get something for like let's say a coke a bottle of coke I don't know two three bucks over here a bottle of coke is roughly five dollars yeah and that's like everywhere not just like you know the airport or train station or whatever everywhere you go it's about the same price so plus a couple of dollars you'll be right now the next thing is it's quite a beautiful country it's quite a beautiful place Every, everywhere i've been so far the architecture is quite beautiful but also the, the nature itself is quite beautiful too unfortunately again the one day i'm spending here is raining and it's not necessarily the worst thing that could have happened i mean i do have this umbrella here with me um and it's not that heavy as well so i'm not getting soaked so to speak so I get to just go out and just enjoy a nice little walk um, after Odin. So I will be going to Copenhagen. Um, and I guess that is the biggest city, more popular city, but it very much is a city, uh, so to speak. So Odin, while it is the third biggest city, apparently, in Denmark, um, has a bit more of a natural historical feel to it as well. So I'm interested to see what that's going to look like. And tonight I am staying at a $120 a night hotel right next to the station so it is a bit fancy um i guess that was because there was no hostels and i didn't really think we'd go on airbnb at that point in time but for future especially in these scandinavian countries that's exactly what i'm going to be doing um so yeah i'm just going to walk around today have a look around see what's here see what looks good maybe take a few photos 
go get some nice food somewhere. Although, another thing, I don't have any Danish crown with me because I got here after about five o'clock, meaning that I couldn't go to any of the currency exchanges. Um, so, anywhere that accepts card, I'm good. Anywhere else, I'm kind of stuffed. Oh, also, to piss or use the toilet in Denmark, you have to pay a whole dollar, a whole Australian dollar. So that's what, five uh, Danish crown. Yeah, five Danish crown just to take a piss. So guys, if you're in the business for collecting piss, this is where you want to come. Make some good money from that. <laughs> have a look at this harbor. I just walked down past one of the docks. Look at this. I'll turn the camera around as well. Look at that. I think it's like an industrial site over here. I might have reached the dead end, but I'll go around somewhere else. Yeah. So let's see what else I can find around here. Get some food, get some good uh, sights, and call it a day. Get some nice sleep today. Finally, one night, not in a hostel. Ooh, yeah, baby. I'm starting to think that life here in Denmark is a bit different because you've got people swimming in an outdoor pool in the rain. And you got these mad lads playing a game of basketball in the rain and eating in the rain too. I think they're just used to it. Like when it's raining all the time, you just got to kind of get on with like, hey, got a bunch of legends. <laughs> Petrol prices, you might think that looks like $1.55, but guess what? That's actually three bucks. Three bucks of bloody petrol. What the hell? So we're walking now through towards the Monte Garden. Um, unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, Everything is closed, but we can appreciate it from the outside. So you look right in front of us over here. You can see an old looking building. And the Monte Garden essentially is a museum of the ages of Denmark. So just like that, it's laid out. Yeah, look at that Funen at the center of the universe. Live city. So yeah, this place has a historical importance to the Danish people um, and the Scandinavian people in as a whole, as the, the myth at least goes that this is the city or area that Odin used to live. Odin being the god of all Nordic gods. Um, yeah, so it's quite relevant in that sense. And this museum here, which is now closed back there, essentially shows us the Renaissance about, or, you know, the progression of the ages essentially from that point on but maybe that's for another trip so Hans Christensen's house is also currently closed to the public at this time of the day but we can always walk through the street and appreciate these old Slash actually newish renovated looking homes. Um, I think potentially this house down the end of this road is Hans Christensen's childhood home where he grew up. So we can have a look from the outside, see what it looks like. Um, also did a bit of fact checking and it turns out Hans Christens Andersen was a Danish writer. I feel like I should have known this, but I guess part of this trip is also to educate myself about world history. So it turns out this place behind me that I thought was Hans Christensen's house is actually just a restaurant. Um, I got food. The actual place is this yellow building behind me. Um, let's go take a look real quick. Again, you can't go inside, but you can appreciate the beauty from the outside. Here is the home in question. Hans Christensen's Strade, which I assume means Hans Christensen's Stead or home. Hans Christensen's Hus. Right there. The birthplace. Yeah. Pretty cool looking. Got a nice novelty store over here as well. I'm not exactly quite sure. I mean, there seems to be people inside actually. Maybe I can go in. Hmm.
turns out that you can actually enter the museum at the moment I'm walking around looking at these exhibits with these headphones and then when you get closer to them it plays an audio recording of what someone narrating Hans Christian Andersen's story or stories more so so yeah let's go ahead Right out here. This place is very nice, like a sanctuary almost. Obviously, it's built to preserve Hans Christian Andersen's home and whatnot, but it also looks like a sanctuary for the gods of some sort. Obviously nothing in it, it looks like renovated floorboards, but the homeland vest, and we cannot go upstairs, so be it, then we shall explore downstairs, yes we may, do you reckon he had this restaurant back in the day as well, have a cheeky feed with the boys, yeah I reckon, get a cheeky feed with the boys all though. I've come to learn that Hans Christian Andersen was quite a loner in this town. Uh, thus the story of the ugly duckling. Uh, among many other facts, actually. Nice house. I reckon this will cost a million bucks in Melbourne, easily. We made it to the top, the roof of Hans Christian Andersen's home. Looks pretty nice in my beer actually. But yeah, that tour was absolutely amazing, I should say. Um, obviously, we've all heard of Hans Christian Andersen uh, in the past. Obviously, myself being one of those people, but not too knowledgeable, admittedly, as you probably already know from this video. But now, after that tour, I feel like I'm quite a lot more knowledgeable. Yeah, I'll show you guys the garden as well. It's actually pretty amazing. So this here is the rooftop garden. Um, those two buildings on the left that I just showed you before, so these ones over here, are the rooftop of the exhibition, I believe, and also Hans Christian Andersen's home. I'm just trying to see if there's a higher point to get up to, but I can't really see it. What a nice place, actually. There you got his face over there on the wall. So yeah, I also found out this place is not pronounced Odense. It's actually Odense. Odense. The name obviously is still accurate in that it was named after the god Odin. But HC, my boy HC, has been become one of the honorary citizens of this town as well and put this town really on the map that's a very nice looking lake over there yeah so that was a fun tour actually if you're in Odense on the way to Copenhagen by train definitely would recommend stopping by um, the home of Hans Christen HC I'm just gonna say HC to make it easier for me <laughs> HC closes at uh, 8 
most days. Um, and the Mon Monta Garden, Monta Garden uh, Museum closes at five, so unfortunately I didn't actually get to go in there. But did get to see the HC uh, house, HC's home. My boy, HC. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. All right, let's see if I can get myself some food because I am starving. Absolutely amazing park. Just had my dinner, walked around the park, uh, event they're having. Probably not really a park, but like essentially a park. Honestly, like the fact that this is in the middle of the city is insane, but look at this boat, a paper boat. I'm assuming some kind of homage to my boy HC as well. But yeah, dude, this place is insane. Look at that. Greenery, grass, everywhere. So you end the food here, and you're in a whole nother world. As soon as you cross this bridge, it's a different life altogether. So cool. And then you got this huge like church over here as well. It's just things to look at everywhere, really. I'll take it all in. <laughs> but I guess that's just the food. Oh, there goes a the town bell. What time is it? Nine o'clock in the dot, and look at the sky. It's still bright outside. It's 9 p.m. and it's still bright outside. That's insane. I mean, it's summer, it's bright, 9 p.m. and it's also raining on the same day. I'm definitely in the other continent right now. <laughs> insane. But yeah, it's been a good time. Also, dinner was amazing. I had um, veal top round, Wiener Schnitzel, Wiener Schnitzel, <laughs> Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, veal top round with Madagascar peppers, um, what else? Seasoned, like in season potato from Denmark and green peas, but like honestly, most juiciest green peas I've ever had. And this like very zesty, thick gravy on top of it as well. So good, but obviously sent me back about $50. Um, Although to be fair, it was in like a fancy restaurant where they kind of cook your steak in front of you type vibe. So kind of to be expected. All in all, it was a delicious meal. The money is, uh, I guess, a small cost in terms of the experience that you get out of it as well. So I'm gonna head back to the hotel now. Although it is still bright outside, I'm a little bit tired. I wanna get some rest before my travel to Copenhagen tomorrow. Quick MTV, my cribs tour. Check it out. This is my hotel room in Odense, Denmark. So I've got a door, I've got a mirror, a desk, a bed, a chair. I have a chair. I have a chair. My things on the floor, a heater, although it is summer um, and I don't really need to use it, but it's not that hot here. Like you guys saw outside, it's like literally white. <laughs> And then here is my bathroom. I've got my own toilet, very nice. Take a nice big sheet. Uh, and I have my own bathroom. And another mirror. So I keep looking at myself. Like my boy H.C. Anderson that I learned today, he kept looking at himself for angles of genius. So, that's my room. Nice and cozy, get a good nice rest. And I'll be pumped and ready to go into Copenhagen. Heading off from Odense to Copenhagen today. Just checked out of my hotel, uh, walking to the train station. And funnily enough, today is actually quite sunny. I've got my sunglasses on, sunscreen slapped on, and it's bright as hell. Yesterday, raining the whole day. Like, what the hell, man? I feel like this is some kind of uh, sick joke, but you know, this town was quite nice in the slight rain as well, as much as it is in the nice sunny day. So let's go to Copenhagen and see what's going on there. So we'll be there for four days, a bit more time to explore, and hopefully not get rained on. 
every single day. All right, let's see what we can do in Copenhagen. Tschüss.